Hey folks, welcome back. Hope you're all well. I'm just out making my rounds this morning out on the property because I want to see what I need to tie up in terms of loose ends. If you guys are like me, you're noticing that the days are starting to get shorter and the temperature is starting to get colder and that's what I'm going to touch on today. That temperature thing. Around here, the temperature throughout the summer is probably around 30 or 35 degrees Celsius above freezing. In the wintertime, it's just like that, but below freezing. Negative 30, the odd time we get down negative 35. Things are not warm around here in the winter. Things are not warm around here in the coming months. If you're like me and you live in an area where you get that fluctuating temperature, the summer is a beautiful thing. The winter, well, I love winter, but I don't exactly love the heating bills. Therefore, I have a heating source, and you guys probably know this already if you've been around for a while. I have a heating source that is essentially free well, on paper, there's no bills that come in for me to pay to heat my home. I heat with firewood. That's what we're going to talk about today. If you're like me, you really enjoy heating with firewood. If you're thinking like me and you want to heat with firewood, well, there's a few things you should know. I've had a variety of different places I've lived before, and they're all in the same climate, but they've all heated with different sources of fuel. Natural gas, propane, heating oil, electricity, and now firewood. I have a little bit of experience with all five of those fuel sources and I want to tell you what my two cents is in terms of what's best for me. You guys can decide what's best for you and quite frankly you might live in a country or uh, a climate in a country where you don't even need heating and I'm kind of envious in the middle of winter. Anyways that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about firewood. I'm going to tell you about the things you may not know you need if you want to dive headfirst into burning firewood as a primary heating source for your home. So, glad you guys are all here, and let's go on inside the shop just for a minute. I want to show you exactly what I'm going to tell you about for firewood processing, firewood cutting, firewood in general. Alright guys, we're going to focus in on firewood as I have written behind me. Before we get there, I want to talk a little bit about some of the other heating options you guys have. Now, I'm no heating consultant or heating expert. But I have had a little bit of experience in terms of cost as a homeowner with some of the other heating sources. Those which I'm talking about include gas, propane, natural gas, electricity, heating oil. Those are the primary ones that I've had experience with. I know there's other options available to you. But for the most part, out of those three fuel sources, um, heating options rather, the ones that I found to be the cheapest include natural gas. So if you live in an area where you have natural gas, especially here in central Ontario, even when compared with firewood, I find that the effort and the cost associated with it definitely makes it the best value. Now, if you're like me, you have a bit of an addiction and that addiction is to firewood. So once I got a taste of that firewood burning, I'm kind of hooked. It also helps that I don't have access to natural gas because I can't even use it as a uh, comparison in this case. But if I did have natural gas, it probably would trump firewood here because it is that much easier, provides great heat and it's quite inexpensive as compared with uh, you know going out and buying a chainsaw or a wood splitter or fueling up all the equipment needed to get firewood or even uh, paying my electricity bill or getting a propane furnace installed. All those different things are very expensive um, relatively speaking and so if I had natural gas on my doorstep and I had a natural gas furnace I'd probably be hooking up to that and burning firewood as a secondary heating source. But I'm not. Firewood is my primary heating source and that's why I'm going to talk about it today. In case some of you guys are out there thinking about taking the leap, taking the plunge and burning firewood as your primary heating source. So here's what I got to say about that. Firewood is labor intensive. It doesn't matter whether you get it delivered to your home already split or you go out in the forest, find a tree, cut it down, split it yourself, etc., etc. Regardless, you're gonna be handling that firewood. Firewood is not light. You're bending over a lot, you're twisting a lot. It's going to be a job. If you're an older folk, well, you know, it's gonna probably take its toll on your body. If you're younger like me, it's still gonna take a toll on your body. So just consider what I tell you in just a minute. Regardless, it's going to take a toll on your body. On my right hand side here, what I have here is I have a scenario and this is a scenario that I live under and what it is, it's cutting and processing my own firewood for my own heat. This is a very fortunate situation I live in where I have a forest that I can go out and select trees from, harvest and uh, process into firewood. 
I broke down some of the uh, pros, some of the cons, some of the costs associated with doing that. And you guys can see here, the wood is free. The trees grow themselves. I don't plant them. Well, the red pine forest was planted, but I didn't do it. The trees that I'm cutting down for firewood, they are naturally grown. So the wood is free. The chainsaw, however, that thing wasn't free. Something to haul the wood with, like a ATV or a tractor, or even a truck or a trailer. That stuff's not free. Splitter, gas powered, you guys saw it. I have a hydraulic wood splitter or an ax. Those things aren't free. I have to have them if I'm gonna process my own wood. I don't have to buy one though. You guys can, especially a hydraulic splitter, you guys can go out and rent one every year if you want. Maybe you got a friend you can borrow one off of, but you gotta have one if you are going to cut your own wood out in your forest, drag it home and uh, process it. Fuel, oil, file for sharpening, maintenance. All that equipment requires those things. And it doesn't matter what year it is, something's gonna break. And so you gotta, you gotta uh, take that into account. Time consuming. Gathering firewood, especially if you have to go out, select a tree, cut it down, haul it in, process it, it is very time consuming. When I had natural gas, all I had to do was walk over to the thermostat, turn it on and bam, heat was coming out. If I wanted heat to continue for the next year, I didn't have to go out and find that gas pocket and tap into it. I just made sure that my bills were paid. Back to cutting and processing your own firewood. In addition to being time consuming, it's very labor intensive. As I mentioned, it doesn't matter if you're older, younger, middle age, it's gonna be taking a toll on your body. I feel it after a hard day working out in the bush and you guys would too, so consider that. If you've got problems, health problems, or you think you might have health problems, this will probably not help you unless you need some exercise because this will certainly give you that. Upfront costs. First year you jump into cutting, skidding, processing your own firewood, there's gonna be some upfront costs. You have to have a chainsaw, you can rent one, but to be honest with you, if you're gonna be processing your own firewood from your own woodlot every year, you probably need to invest in buying a, a chainsaw. That's an upfront cost. Something to haul your wood with, that's an upfront cost. Something to split your wood with, upfront cost. This, fuel, oil, file, maintenance, that's gonna be a yearly cost. You're gonna be spending that every single year, even if you've already purchased all that equipment. So what I did here for getting your own wood in your own wood lot, I broke down the general price. Now keep in mind, I'm in central Ontario, Canada. Things tend to be quite expensive here relative to other parts of the world or maybe even other parts of Canada. These are estimates. So chainsaw, I ended up paying about 700 bucks Canadian for my chainsaw. I can't remember what the other chainsaw I have cost, but one chainsaw, a good one for firewood, five, 700 bucks. Maybe you can get it for 300 if it's used, who knows. Splitter, I have a hydraulic gas splitter. I bought a used one, I think it was 900 bucks. You can probably get it somewhere around there, more, less, up to you. You can rent one as well. Every year, as I mentioned, you're spending 300 bucks. First year total. If you're gonna buy everything, you're probably spending at least 1,900 bucks Canadian to dive in, to get your feet wet, to start getting the wood into your home and processing it yourself. Can you do that cheaper? Yep. Rent things, borrow things, uh, buy used things, absolutely. But one thing that won't change every single year is this cost. The fuel, oil, file, sharpening, maintenance costs, that's gonna be every single year. So if we break this down, you doing all the work yourself, assuming your time is free, I estimate I'm spending about 300 bucks a year, that's an estimate, to get my firewood into my home and heat my home. This goes up and down. My chainsaw bites the dust one year and I gotta get a new one. Well, this $300 is all of a sudden through the roof. But if I can keep things running smoothly, only pay for the maintenance, sharpening, fuel, oil, I'm probably gonna do pretty good, 300 bucks, pretty cheap. 12 face cords a year, I just wanna throw that out there. That's approximately what I'm burning every year. So if you guys can, uh, if you guys can sort of wrap your head around that, 12 face cords, so face cord is one third of a bush cord. So for those of you out there who only talk in bush cords, I'm talking one third of that bush cord. So 12 of those face cords per year is what I burn. If you look at that, 300 bucks for 12 face cords, that's pretty good. Let's say you don't have your own woodlot, but you want to dive into the firewood world. That's okay. You sort of have two options here, and I broke them down on my left-hand side here. 
you can buy firewood pre-split. And I did this for a number of years before I lived on a property with acreage. Buying pre-split pre -split lumber is a good option because you're really breaking down that upfront equipment cost. If you guys have a look here, I don't have to have a chainsaw. I don't have to have some way to haul the firewood. I don't have to have some way to split the firewood. I don't have those maintenance costs on that equipment. The only real cost I have is the cost of the wood to get dropped off at my house. If you look here, here's what it costs where I live to get split face cords of firewood. $100 per face cord. Keep in mind, that's green. That means they cut the tree down, probably sit somewhere at the uh, processing place for a little bit, they split it, they drop it off at your home. You still gotta stack it up yourself though, and stack it up is going to be your labor. Yes, it's a lot less labor than cutting down the tree yourself, hauling it up to your house, splitting, stacking, but it is still some labor. Consider that depending on your health. If you take breaks and you do it slowly, I've seen 80 year olds do it. Driving down a country road, you see Ma and Pa out there stacking firewood. They've been doing it their whole life. Perfect. However, if you haven't done it before, I tell you, your back is gonna hate you the first day. But at the end of that day, maybe you've saved a few dollars. Looking at overall cost here, because there's less upfront investment, if I were to burn 12 face cords a year, multiplied by 100 face cord dollars, 100 face cord dollars, $100 per face cord, you're at about 1200 bucks per year. That's what it would cost me. $1,200 per year to heat my home versus $300 to heat my home. Consider this. That's the second, third, fourth, fifth year of heating my home. The first year of heating my home with firewood, when I process my own wood, is 1900 bucks approximately. That's more expensive than getting it delivered. But that's only the first year. Second, third, fourth consecutive years becomes cheaper for me to do all the work myself if I have a wood lot. Back to if you don't have a wood lot. This right here, pre split wood, beauty. It's great because you tend to get wood cut to the cut to the width you want, 16, 18, 21 inches. Tends to be all good wood too, right? If you got a good person around who has a processor, uh, they tend to work with you and give you the wood you want. All hardwood usually. At least where we were from, you want hardwood. It gives off the most BTUs. If you don't want to get it delivered already split and just have to stack it, you want to find a cheaper option. The cheaper option is to get firewood logs delivered. So basically, what will happen is you will have a um, you will have a wood processor out in a out in a tract of forest somewhere. They'll cut the trees. Uh, they'll load them onto a, a semi truck. You can get those logs straight from the forest delivered to your house. What'll happen is they'll drop them off and you'll have one heck of a pile of logs there and then it'll be up to you to process it. This will save you money, buying the logs, cutting it and splitting it yourself and stacking it. This will save you money because overall costs in my area, you're looking at about $1,200 and that'll get you enough logs for 22 face cords or the equivalent double load called the tandem load, $2,400, that'll get you about 44 face cord. If you do the math here and break it down, you're at about 55 bucks a face cord. Comparatively, 55 versus $100 a face cord, logs are cheaper at face value. However, don't forget, this is getting you, this is getting you um, uh, a face cord of firewood, but it doesn't consider the fact that you have to cut those logs into rounds, then you have to split them, then you have to stack them. This stuff here has already eliminated cutting, has already eliminated splitting. Getting back to this, $55 a face cord. What you have to consider, you will need a chainsaw. You can rent one, you can borrow one, you can buy one. That's gonna be a cost, unless your buddy down the road you got, uh, you got an in with and maybe you'll trade him something for it. Splitter and an ax, you need that stuff. You're buying it, renting it, borrowing it. This, fuel oil maintenance, file for sharpening. Because you're gonna have a chainsaw, because you're gonna have potentially a splitter or an ax, you're gonna to need to do some maintenance. You have to buy fuel, you have to buy bar oil. This is going to be an ongoing cost. What's great about getting firewood logs delivered is it's a little less time consuming. To be honest with you, when I'm doing firewood, when I'm processing it, when I'm going out in the bush to get that firewood, it is very time consuming for me to go out, cut down a tree, 
delimit, cut it to length, skid it, even before I get a chance to cut it into rounds and make it into firewood. That first process, that first step is very time consuming. Labor intensive. Even though the logs are delivered in a big pile right where you want it on your property, you are still going to have a lot of labor and time wrapped up in getting that made into firewood. What you're going to need to do is basically fire up that chainsaw, keep it sharp and keep cutting. You're going to be cutting and cutting and cutting. You eliminated that first step of going out and gathering the tree, but you still have to cut it into rounds. You still have to get those rounds onto a splitter or split by hand. Labor, time. It's going to use both of those. Upfront costs, you still have those, just like if you have your own woodlot to get the trees. The only difference is uh, you're going to have a little less upfront cost because you don't have to go out in the forest and get the tree yourself. Both of these options here, they're going to require a little bit of time. This one obviously will require a lot less time than this one. This one, where you get the trees in the bush, will require the most amount of time. This is assuming your time is free. This is assuming your time is free. This is assuming your time is free. If you put a number on your time, well, all these numbers go out the window. But these are the three basic options I have here. Just to break down the last one in terms of its comparative cost to the other two options. I broke it down. The first year, if you were to buy all the equipment you need, like a chainsaw, a hydraulic wood splitter, fuel and oil, you're probably gonna be floating around $2,560 Canadian your first year. This includes the logs, of course. Let's see how that compares. $2,560 for the first year. $1,200 for the first year. $1,900 for the first year. But then the second year, so after you already have all that equipment, second year, third year, fourth year, assuming your equipment doesn't break down, $990 a year to get the firewood to heat your home. $990 a year, $1,200 a year, $300 a year. Cheapest option, getting the firewood out in the bush yourself. Next, these two are close, but it is cheaper to get saw logs, uh, excuse me, firewood logs delivered to your home. And finally, getting it cut and split already delivered to your home is the most expensive. These are the three options that I've come up with for firewood. And if you guys get a look there at all of them, you can see some of the pros and cons that I've thought of. Overall, despite the cost, if you're like me and you really like heating with firewood, there's nothing better than the warmth you get from a wood stove. I can tell you, I've had warmth from furnaces before. I've had warmth from uh, in-floor heating before. I've seen uh, warmth come off of the, um, the baseboard heaters before. It is not the same as the smell of a wood stove and the heat you get from it in the middle of winter. That's my two cents, folks. If you guys have any questions or comments about burning firewood in general, make sure you put it all down below. I appreciate all you guys being here every week and listening to me rambling on about things. I hope everyone's doing well out there and I hope everyone comes back next time.